there's really no other reason not to pick Josh Shapiro than the fact that he's Jewish, right? The only reason a person wasn't selected was because he is Jewish. That is going to be a huge deal breaker for many, many Jews. Kamala Harris freaks out by choosing a radical leftist as her VP running mate. So in this video, we're gonna break it all down. Welcome back to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this out to more people just like you and me. Vice President Harris is obviously running for president, so she needs a VP running mate. She only had three options. Senator Mark Kelly out of Arizona, Governor Tim Walz from Minnesota, and Josh Shapiro, the governor of Pennsylvania. And the point of this video is how they basically freaked out double down on choosing a progressive candidate because they have a certain percentage of their base that is progressive and there's a certain level of anti-Semitism as well because that's why they didn't even go with Josh Shapiro. But the problem that we need to recognize right now is this is probably the most radical, progressive, far left ticket in the history of our country. So without further ado, Let's play that video. Let's go ahead and bring in special report anchor Brett Baer. He joins us via phone to react to the news. Brett, um, initial thoughts off the bat about this choice. Well, I think uh, to Kaylee's point, I do think Republicans in some corners are rejoicing. They thought that uh, Josh Shapiro was going to be a, a specific challenge for them in Pennsylvania. I can tell you um, Dave McCormick, the Senate candidate in Pennsylvania, is probably um, very happy right now. Uh, makes it makes that less challenging, perhaps, that race against uh, Bob Casey. But I, I do think that it is a doubling down on the progressive side of the party. I also think it shows the inherent power of Nancy Pelosi. I mean, think about all that she has influenced, perhaps, in just the last four and a half weeks. Uh, the removal of a Democratic nominee, current president, uh, and... Now, you know, in part, the selection of the vice presidential nominee, she was weighing in uh, and and her her point mattered. Uh, I, I think it raises some questions about uh, the Jewish vote and how perhaps afraid uh, the Democratic Party is of the Palestinian protester clash that we may still see uh, some of in Chicago, but perhaps less now with uh, Josh Shapiro not on the ticket. And finally, I, I do think that it is interesting. You know, he's 60 years old, uh, roughly the same age as Kamala Harris, and um, and it's a different look. Uh, Minnesota obviously is is not one that is really in play. A state, it was closer, uh, but it won't be now probably. Um, and it's it's a it's a fascinating pick that is really has some mm -hmm. people scratching their heads. Uh, yeah. Now, depending on who you ask, they will shake their head or they will actually agree with this pick. But one of the biggest things I want to share with you guys just right up front is this. Uh, Tim Walz is absolutely progressive and he is proud of being progressive. And this country historically has fought against progressive policies. Now, there are people on the Democrat side they also have fought against progressive policies. And we see this in California. So many people have left California. Not all of them are Republican or conservative. There's a lot of Democratic leaning people who do not agree with what Gavin Newsom has done to the state because of his progressive policies. So that kind of gives you guys a, a frame of reference in regards to this VP pick. And obviously not a lot of people know who this governor really is. However, the former governor had this to say about him. Let me say congratulations to Governor Walls. I know him. While our politics are very different, uh, we get along. I like him. He's got an extremely progressive view of the world, and we can talk about that if you want. But this uh, selection, I think, is a doubling down of the progressive base model turnout for trying to win this election. And he, he himself will say now, you know, he's the most progressive governor in the country. And so he's not running away from the idea that he is you know, ultra liberal and that his accomplishments that he's most proud of reflect that. Right. I think that will be the number one question that people ask, aside from who is he, is what does he stand for? So I think talking about his progressive politics is important. Uh, share with us what you know about his his voting record, where he stands and more recently as governor. Yeah, Marnie, and something that's that's less obvious just quickly 
is the inter-party, Democratic Party elimination of the other contenders and why. It revealed some divisions. There's, this isn't getting a lot of coverage, but, you know, Mark Kelly got taken out on labor issues. Shapiro got taken out on school choice and had other detractors. And, and so as you look at who the progressive favored, they liked Governor Walls, and that tells you how big of a component part of the Democratic Party that's become. But in terms of Governor Walz's voting record, when he was in Congress, he was viewed as a moderate, but the district was a swing district, so he had to be. And then when he was first years as governor, he uh, you know was sort of balanced in the sense that the outcomes were balanced because he had a partially Republican legislature. So by definition, they had to be balanced. But when they got full control, when he could do what he wanted to do, it was full bore, you know, a full bore pedal to the metal, full progressive agenda. And that's what he really is most proud of. And I think that's probably what snagged him the, the uh, VP place. Okay. So even the former governor of Minnesota, who is a friend of his, is clearly stating this guy is ultra progressive, right? I mean, this is in a sense frightening for the rest of the country, because if you guys don't even understand how crazy his policies really are, let's take a look at this clip. What could be weirder than signing a bill into law that requires schools to stock tampons in boys' bathrooms? Or weirder than signing legislation allowing minors to receive sex change operations? Try electing the man who signed those bills, Vice President of the United States. Enter Chief Weirdo Tim Walls. As governor of Minnesota, Walls supported legislation that endangers minors, hurts women, and puts radical ideology ahead of common sense. Now Kamala wants Walls to enforce those laws on a national scale. Tim Walls, too weird, too radical. Yeah, exactly, too radical, right? I just want everybody to listen. I don't care if you're not gonna vote for Trump. I would I really want you to listen. If, if people are watching and, and you're not even gonna participate, fine, whatever, but just understand this. What's at stake is you have one side who is ultra progressive, meaning they want men and women's restrooms. They want men playing in women's sports. They want to give driver license to illegal immigrants. OK, they want to uh, approve gender affirming care. They have celebrated that. OK, and they are also looked at as a sanctuary city in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so the bottom line to what I'm saying here is that everything that has been causing problems in our economy, in our culture, as a society, behind it are progressive policies and ideology, and that's exactly what this ticket represents. And if you wanna know what happens if our nation goes with this ticket, just look at California. Now, obviously that is one side to the conversation, so let's hear the other side of the conversation. Let's take a look at this video. Uh, obviously, uh, the big news of the day is that Tim Waltz has been nominated as the VP, or is, is now the presumptive nominee, I should say, uh, for Kamala Harris. My view on it is it just highlights how radical Kamala Harris is. This is a person who listened to the Hamas wing of her own party and selecting a nominee. This is a guy who's proposed shipping more manufacturing jobs to China, who wants to make the American people more reliant on garbage ener energy instead of good American energy, and has proposed defunding the police just as Kamala Harris does. Uh, I think it's interesting, actually, they, they make an interesting tag team because, of course, Tim Waltz allowed rioters to burn down Minneapolis in the summer of 2020, and then the few who got caught, Kamala Harris helped bail them out of jail. So uh, it, it is more instructive for what it says about Kamala Harris, that she doesn't care about the border, she doesn't care about crime, she doesn't care about American energy, and most importantly, she doesn't care about the Americans who have been made to suffer under those policies. Uh, I don't think that's the shiniest object at all. I had no idea who Tim Walls was either, and I'm in politics. I do this for a living. Um, look, I think it didn't matter if it was him or Tim Kaine. I know people don't remember that name. That was Hillary's uh, vice presidential nominee. He was dull and boring, too. So it doesn't really matter whether you're a shiny object or not. What matters is what are your policy positions? And I want to tell the American people very clearly, Harris Walls are not going to fix, fix inflation. They're not going to fix our economy. They will not fix the southern border. And let's be very clear with what's going on internationally right now. Do you really expect Kamala Harris and Tim Walz to bring peace to the Middle East and the world? I don't think so. There's only one person who can, who can do that, and that's Donald J. Trump. Apparently, Kaylee McEnany now joins us in the studio. And good morning to you. Already Republicans are saying this is the most extreme ticket 
in political history. What's your take on Tim Waltz on the undercard now? This is a stunning choice. I imagine there's a lot of cheering at Mar-a-Lago at the moment. Look, Tim Walls, he's no one to scoff at. He unseated a six-term Republican in Congress. He won a conservative district. He began as a moderate. And then he had a radical transformation as soon as he got a trifecta in Minnesota. I think it is fair to call him a progressive in sheep's clothing. When you look at his record over the last few years, what you see are transgender surgeries for minors, carbon electrical grid by 2040, uh, driver's licenses for illegal immigrants, in function, his abortion policy allows abortion until birth. These are policies that are far to the left of America. And as John McCormick at The Wall Street Journal pointed out, Kamala Harris has to do the exact opposite of what Tim Walls did. Tim Walls became more progressive. Kamala Harris is trying to become more moderate. But Republicans are going to say, you've shred, you've shed all your progressive policies, but yet you chose a progressive instead of the guy who outperformed Donald Trump and Joe Biden in Pennsylvania. And that man's name is Josh Shapiro. OK, so you guys see all of those reactions. And uh, it brings me to the point that I want to make in this video right now about passing on Josh Shapiro uh, because he is Jewish. He's serving the IDF. He supports Israel unapologetically. And there is a certain part of the Democrat Party that is for Palestine. Um, and that is a uprising right now in this country. We know that throughout the country on university campuses, it even got to a point where the president of Harvard had to resign because there was so much anti-Semitism on these campuses due to the violent protest, right? People were protesting Israel. They still are. And matter of fact, the DNC has to up their security because there are a lot of people protesting the Democrat Party and they're handling of the Israel and Hamas war. And so the bottom line here is I find it funny and frightening at the same time that the party who runs on identity politics passed over their best candidate, probably the candidate that should have been running for president, quite frankly, Josh Shapiro, the governor of Pennsylvania, they passed over him because he's Jewish and they want to pander to the small percentage of their party who is for Hamas or Palestine. Isn't that crazy? This is who we're dealing with. So obviously, I believe this puts their campaign at risk for a potential uh, backfiring of Jewish Americans who are not going to like that she made this move. Uh, let's take a look at what they're saying about this. Right. I think it's even less about Israel than it is just about, you know, Jew hatred even here. I'm definitely seeing a shift. Jewish Americans are paying very close attention to what's happening right now. And let me tell you something, you know, there's really no other reason not to pick Josh Shapiro than the fact that he's Jewish, right? All of the options are pro-Israel. He just happens to be the Jewish pro-Israel option. And I think if American Jews get wind of the fact that the only reason a person wasn't selected was because he is Jewish, that is going to be a huge deal breaker for many, many Jews. OK, I couldn't have said it better, right? Uh, she is spot on in, in regards to that point. And I would love to see what's going to happen over the next 30 days in regards to uh, Kamala Harris basically freaking out over this and choosing Tim Walsh. It's almost as if she bent the knee and she had no choice but to go that route because she did not want to do the hard thing, which would have been to choose Josh Shapiro. It would have been the smartest play. And overall, I believe that Josh Shapiro would appeal uh, to more Americans than Tim Walsh and his progressive ideology. So as I wrap up this video, I have three things for you guys. Number one, uh, the Democrat Party they are suffering over their own identity politics. This is why you should not make things about race, religion, or gender. You should be making things about someone's competency, uh, things based on merit, uh, based on results. Are they actually helping people? Do they have a track record of actually improving other people's lives? That's what you should be judging people based on. And so far, the Kamala Harris vice presidency has not helped Americans. It's actually made things worse. The second point is, I mean, our country is more divided than ever. It's I find it very funny that we have a uh, conservative side that is really running for president and a progressive side that is also running for president. And so now we find ourselves in that position again where we have two polar opposites of each other and none of them are truly in the center. And my final point is, do we really trust 
that progressives can lead this country in the right way where prosperity will come, our foreign policy will improve, that we will have peace in the Middle East, that our borders will be secure, that our children will be safe and taught the right things. I'm not so sure of that. In fact, I don't believe that whatsoever that that's possible. I believe on the conservative side, it's more likely to happen than it is on the progressive side of things. But hey, that's my mindset. What's yours? What do you guys think about her announcement as the VP pick? What do you think about the Democrat Party and Kamala Harris freaking out over the fact that Josh Shapiro is Jewish? He served in the IDF and he's a huge supporter of Israel. And there's a certain percentage of their own party who didn't like that. And they are experiencing this back and forth protesting over the Hamas and Israel war. I want to know what your answers are and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.